You know why people quit? Two reasons. They don't want you to see the real them. And they want to quit before they feel like they're going to get hurt. It's a protective device. When you go to apply for a job, that H&R person is looking for one major thing. How many jobs you can own? Before they invest in you, because it says to them that you will carry out, you are whole enough to finish what you start. Now they ain't even saying. Quitting is not an option. Marry her, and I don't care how she act, I don't care how many lovers, you can't quit. You come in the kingdom of God, come to live safe, come to walk with God, you can't quit. You can't get mad at God and just quit. You can say you can't quit. First of all, as of today, there's no such thing as a member. A member, you can move your membership. When you plant it, you can't root yourself up. When God plants you in a ministry, he plants you there for a purpose. But when you come in and join something, you always have an extra strategy to walk out. Quitters never stay. They never stay. It takes, they said, well, you know, we want you to sit in a ministry for a year because the only thing they want to do is if they give you something, you're going to quit. How much backbone you got? The least little obstacle, will it blow you away because that's the value of a man is the ability to endure. Okay. Y'all don't believe that? Buy a car, pay $25,000, and it lasts you a week. You won't be mad. Hello. Why? You gon' you gon' you gon' it's gonna quit on you because it needs some gas. I ain't putting no gas in here. I put gas in here already. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take the thing and take it back. No, you gonna have to do some maintenance on it. And after two hundred thousand miles, you gonna have to do everything on it if it lasts for that long. Because there's certain things that's called maintenance, and it's in your life. I don't know why when we get saved, we act like there ain't no maintenance job that needs to be done on us. He said, marry the whore and ain't no way out. I don't care. He came back and back and back and said, Lord, look, I done went and bought her back. Read chapter 2. Paul, your mother, into court, accuse her. I'm sorry. Let me start at the first verse. Rename your brother. God's somebody. Rename your sisters. All mercy. Verse 2. Call your mother into court. Ex accuse her. She's no longer my wife. I'm no longer her husband. Tell her to quit dressing like a whore. Okay, hold on. See, when, when God do something, we try to fix up and say, Lord, I need a reason. If she changed her demeanor, that doesn't change you. And that's why I like the fact that I can come in here with a big hat and I can be as snooty as, as Caputi. Because that's the image of what they call a first lady. Which I don't know what that is anyway. I don't have a revelation of it. Because when you start counting, we in trouble. Y'all will get that next week. for somebody that that might help. It, it creates an image. So he's saying, look, take the clothes off, and maybe that's the thing that's drawing. Maybe that's the thing that's driving. Take the clothes off, change your clothes. Put something else on. See, I want you to know it's not the thing that you do on the outside. It's what's coming out of you. If you around a person long enough, they're gonna locate themselves by what they say. Let me tell you, there ain't nothing new under the sun. If you liar, you're gonna lie. 
If you cuss, you gonna cuss. If you honest, it's gonna come through. If you got some strength in you, if you genuine, it's gonna come through. Yes, it will. If you're the same person all the time, you hang around people, that's why a lot of times folk don't want you hang around them too long. I remember the, the day that I found the real me, 1987. I didn't even know what the real me was. Because I lived in this religious bubble of trying to walk in a certain way when I realized one day I can take the mask off and I can be me. So, so Hosea said, look, if we, take my, if we take her and put on some different clothes, maybe she won't be a whore. If we take the church and we dress it up and we put good music and do all of these things, maybe it won't be a whore. The Lord knew the church was a whore when he married it. He knew you were dysfunctional when he brought you in and accepted you. He didn't have to vote you in. He planted you in the place. See, when God plants you, I heard this the other day. I was at a church. I got scooped up. That's where I heard this revelation. Uh, my best friend was in town, and what she did, I, she gets off the plane, and she's in church 24-7. Bless you, Pastor Bill. And so that's where she was headed. I had a half an hour to get dressed, and I ended up in this church. I don't even know where it was. I'm in the back seat of the car. But one of the things that the man of God said that day, he said, the problem is we got too many people that have membership in the church. And just like a membership, I had a membership at Gold's Gym, and I moved my membership over to LA Fitness, and then I moved my, you know, you move your membership if you don't like the way their workout equipment is, if it's always breaking, if it's too crowded, you move. But when God plants you in a place, the only way you can move is somebody else move you and transplant you. You can't move yourself when you plant it. So, there's not this option when this flower gets in this plant that, okay, the wind is blowing and I didn't done my do, I didn't blossom the bloom, so I got to get up out of this dirt and go to another pot. It don't happen when you plant it. I said, I got it. Because if people are not planted, the least little thing that Gomar did, Hosea, I'm in Hosea 1 and Hosea 2 for those of you that are looking in your Bible where we are. He said, marry her with her problems. Marry her with her dysfunction. Marry her with her anger. Marry her with her unfaithfulness. Marry her. We know she's going to go back. But before I change her, I want you to come in covenant with her. Because one of the things that God will teach you in a ministry is unconditional love. Amen. As long as you teach them. You know, I thought about this morning. I was, I, I enjoy picking up these guys. They just got to be a little bit earlier. Amen. And I got to be a little bit earlier. Because I'm able to, it, to touch their lives. And something that one of them said to us, that let me know that they appreciated us coming to get them as senior leaders. And I'm going to hold that to them. Because I remember being picked up myself from our youth choir director every Wednesday night coming all the way to East Chicago from Gary. And it was so many in there we used to laugh and talk about reaching down to tie each other's shoe. They tore up a lot of cars picking us up. I remember times when you, you sat in the front, you could see the gas hands shaking. They were believing God going and believing God coming, but they picked us up because today I'm saved because of Dolores and David Blakely. And they never complained. Not only that, they fed us when we was hungry. Because we'd be in rehearsal all night long trying to get our parts. So it's in me to serve. It's in me because somebody served my life. And on Thursday State Congress, they served me. We learn how to serve when we're not takers. See, God would have never 